Hello everyone, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Anusha. I'm going to my first year of medicine at King's College London. And today's video is gonna be around the personal statement. Now I know some of you have been asking whether or not there's a perfect way to write a personal statement or a template that you should use. There really isn't, and by no means is mine perfect. But I'm hoping by sharing some of my tips and the way that I approach writing my personal statement, it will be able to help some of you guys as well as clear up some of the myths around the medical personal statement and what you need and what you don't need. my mug but it's not a coffee it's not a tea it's not a mocha just water stay hydrated kids so in my opinion the first paragraph is always the most difficult one to write because in this case it's what the admissions tutor will see first and you want to make a good impression regardless of the course you're doing this is basically the paragraph where you show why you're motivated to study this degree and why you want to spend three or however many years it is you're doing studying for it. So for the case of medicine, don't just talk about helping people or working in a hospital or studying or liking science. Talk about something that will make you stand out from the rest of the candidates. If you're applying for Oxbridge and you're thinking of applying for medicine, you have to tailor your personal statement slightly different to perhaps what you would do if you're applying to other universities. I applied for Cambridge and the majority of my personal statement, although it included work experience and what I enjoy and my activities, mainly included academic events or research that I'd taken part in. I'd probably say 75% of my personal statement was based around research or work that I've done surrounding the course or the subjects for medicine. By no means does this need to be the case for you, this is just my personal experience. Now for medicine, be sure to mention that this isn't a decision that you've made overnight. Now of course we know that medicine is incredibly rewarding, but it isn't a decision that you can make like that and you need to make sure that the universities know that this is something that you've thought through carefully and that you're ready to pursue this degree. The limit is 4,000 characters, which might seem like a lot to some of you, but it's really not. It's less than a page, probably in about size 12 font, which isn't a lot when you think about how much you want to include in that. So choose your characters wisely. Um, make sure that if you're putting a sentence in, that's really going to add to your personal statement and it's not something that is just filling the space. Also known as waffle. Cut the waffle, cut the waffle, cut the waffle. That's why perhaps when you've done your first or second draft, go through each sentence and see if it really adds something to your personal statement. For example, just saying, I observed a GP on a placement and I saw a few patients and I saw X, Y, Z cases, that's great. But then if you don't say what you learned from it, then that will evidently be worth very little in your personal statement and it won't be seen as something that makes you stand out when it potentially could be. This may seem like a silly point to make and I'm sure everyone will check their grammar before using their personal statement, but it's a good topic to cover on. The personal statement is the first piece of written work that you're gonna give to your university before your interview, before you even see your exams, before you get your results. So you wanna make a good first impression. Now I'd recommend once you're happy with the personal statement, print it out, give it to a few people to read and obviously get their opinion and what they think of it, but also check for grammatical errors, maybe get a pen and circle the different mistakes that you've made so that you can go back and when you're doing your final draft, you can add those edits in. Some of you may try and change the structure of your sentences in order to fit the number of characters, but if it ends up sounding really weird, then that's going to take away all the effort that you've put in and just look a bit weird. So check your grammar. Medicine is an incredibly rewarding profession. You get so much out of it. You're constantly learning, you're helping people and you're working as a team. That's all great. But you've also got to acknowledge that it is stressful and challenging at times and not as glamorous as everyone thinks. And that's what you've got to get across in your personal statement somehow. So for example, if you shadowed a GP and you came across a situation that was quite challenging for the doctor and the patient, and you mentioned how you were able to realise that, even if you didn't know before, that's really great because then that shows that you appreciate the hard work that is required for a doctor and that you're also well informed that you might come across that if you become a doctor. So work experience and volunteering are both key factors of the personal statement for medicine. Volunteering more so than work experience, but having a bit of both would be great. Now, at the end of the day, it's not about all the things that you've done, but more so about what you've learned from it and what you can take away from the experience. So when talking about the different experiences that you think will be relevant for medicine, you've also got to reflect on those. Now, I can't stress this enough. Please don't just list what you've done. 
Don't just say, I've done X, Y, Z. Talk about what you've learned and talk about how you think it will help you in the medical field. Medical schools would much rather that you spoke about, for example, soft skills that you learned during the work experience, rather than just listing all the places that you've been to for volunteering, but not talking about what you've learned. Volunteering is a key factor about medicine because it shows that you've had the long-term commitment, that you're dedicated and that you're willing to take time out of your day to put towards this volunteering. Now, medicine is of course a very long degree. It's five or six years, depending on where you go. So you've got to reflect that you are preparing yourself for this journey. So when mentioning volunteering, make sure to put a sort of time frame so that they can see that you've had some sort of long-term volunteering commitment. Now by soft skills, I mean things such as sympathy, empathy, patience, things that you can't really describe in a personal statement without having some sort of evidence and that evidence should be your work experience. Have you shown that you have the qualities you need to be a doctor? And I'm not saying you need all of them, there's no way you have medical school for that, you're gonna learn so many things along the way, but by showing that you have some qualities, it will help the medical admissions tutors see that you're on the way and you're improving to become a good healthcare professional. A good way to do this again is use specific examples. The method that I used when writing was STAR method, which is situation, task, action and results. The situation being the setting that you're in and what you were doing. So for example, if you were in a care home and helping the elderly residents and the task would be that you'd have to play a game with them or that you'd have to take them to the park or something and you come across a problem or a situation that you need to overcome. The action is talking about what you did to overcome that and how you approached the situation in the best way possible. And the result is whether or not you were successful. So whether or not it helped you achieve what you were trying to do. So for example, if it helped you to communicate with the residents properly, or if you were able to calm them down, if they were in distress, things like that. But again, you can use that for other scenarios. It doesn't have to be care home. It doesn't have to be GP or hospital. Another thing I'm gonna to touch upon is what you should know from your personal statement. Now, once you've again done a few drafts of a personal statement or you've written out once, go through each sentence and see if you can talk about it in an interview, specifically if your degree requires one. Now, if you think you can talk about it in an interview confidently and to have a discussion with the interviewer, then keep it in and that's great. But if you don't think you'll be able to talk about it, then cut it out because there is a very, very high chance that they could ask you about it in an interview and you don't want to be stuck on the spot and your mind to just go blank. So let's say you included a book or you spoke about some research that you've done. Maybe a few days before, go over the book again if you made any notes or go over the research paper or whatever it is that you did just to keep it fresh in your mind and so that you don't panic when you're closer to the day and you're confident with what you've done. The last paragraph should be talking about why you think you're a suitable candidate for the course that you're applying for and ultimately the degree that you want to do, medicine or not medicine related. Now, if you do have enough characters, maybe reiterate your desire and why you really want to do it and how you're looking forward to it, as well as how you're aware of the challenges that you might face along the way. It's kind of like a conclusion in an essay, but of course that depends on how many characters you have left. Please don't sacrifice other characters in the personal statement to make your final paragraph big and bold. Try not to include anything new because you won't have enough space or it won't fit well into the personal statement. Just try to summarise what you've reiterated and maybe reference to something you said before when tying in why you think you'd be well suited for the career. So yeah, those are all the tips that I have. I'm hoping that you found the video useful. I'm hoping that you found it informative and that there were some useful pointers to take away when writing your personal statement. I'm also hoping that it did clear up some of the myths. If you did find the video useful, then please make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. You can also keep updated on my Instagram, which is at mygkpmonologues if you want to check it out. And stay tuned for more content.